Uh, good evening. Uh, thanks uh, for the organizer for the invitation. And so uh, what I will talk uh, about today is uh, uh, about uh, power efficient communication. Uh, so I will just discuss some uh, basic facts uh, that we have uh, uh, in the asymptotic and the finite lens regime. And I just uh, want to focus on some uh, uh, very famous uh, uh, modulations uh, that are used for uh, for the IoT like LoRa, okay? And I just try to focus why I think that uh, they are inefficient in terms of coding and uh, what could be done if you want to improve their performance. Uh, especially, uh, we I will focus on the single user case, okay? But uh, you will have to think that uh, we will have a, such a huge gap between what we can have and what we have, actually, that in fact we can we can have a very very uh, uh, very big back off, you know, in terms of uh, power interference we can uh, we can have, uh, so uh, we can uh, we can try to uh, to fight also. So uh, just try to to convince you that. Uh, Maybe we, we just have to tackle the problem differently, okay? Okay, so this is joint work with uh, uh, some people of uh, of the lab, Jocelyn, uh, Lorenzo, and uh, Asma, who are uh, PhD students. Uh, they were working on CSK, and uh, the talk talk today will be about Laurent. This is joint work also with Benjamin Gada and Jean-Frédéric Choutou from Airbus Defense in Space, because part of, uh, uh, the work has been uh, initiated for some uh, IoT by satellite uh, with CNES. So I will report some, some report. So the context is the following. We will uh, talk about uh, low power wireless uh, access network. So what we talk about is about power and energy or energy efficient communications, okay? And uh, main waveforms and receiver features for IP1 are, uh, we want to have something that is uh, cheap, low PRPR, low SNR level of the receiver, low data rate, and so on. So it's exactly the opposite uh, to URLC, okay? Uh, the common thing is that we will uh, have short packets with uh, short payloads, okay? And uh, contrary to uh, to URLC, you, you have a, a, a channel, okay, that will, uh, very slowly, okay? And we will have fast fading as a kind of model, okay? Uh, and so typically you're not uh, frequency selective on this kind of thing. And uh, most of the time you will also consider not coherent communication. It will impact a lot the capacity, okay? And the way you will have to design the codes and so on. So I will show you that you can design code for the coherent channel, for example, for BICM with dirty decoding. And uh, it will be stable on a, a current channel, but the opposite is not true. If you're doing your design for the current channel, maybe uh, it's not a good solution for the not current one. So you have to, to be careful. So usually you know very well this kind of course, so you have channel capacities. This is a spectral efficient communication, okay? I put here, uh, the two generation capacity, but also the 1D, because in fact, when you are talking about LoRa, even if it's uh, complex exponential, the dimension behind this kind of signal is real, and we will see why. And so finally, we are uh, facing this, and we will see how we can improve the spectral efficiency. And we we will, when we compare, for example, some extension of LoRa, it's not the same dimension. In fact, you will have two dimension, like PSK LoRa or Coplanar LoRa. They are uh, they evolve in the two dimension uh, space, while LoRa is evolving in one dimension. I will show you. Okay, so uh, what we want here is just to work in this part, and so uh, to see this very well, what we have to do is just to go to the log domain, okay, and do a a loop on this area, and we want and we want to communicate in this region. Okay, how to do this? So, so usually we will use nonlinear modulation, orthogonal modulation. Okay, and this is uh, all things that are known for 
for a long time, but uh, this is the way we are ending this, uh, this, um, this regime, okay? So today I will just review main feature of power efficient modulation, try to do some classification. I will show you how we can design a sparse graph based LDPC codes, binary and non-binary, that can appear at close to the capacity in each regime. In fact, it's quite simple in BICM ID. It's much more difficult in the non-binary setting. And uh, I will discuss, I will uh, add some discussion on uh, for the extension of LoRa. And then I will try to, uh, to show you how maybe we can uh, just find the curse of dimensionality for this kind of uh, modulation uh, to, to use a multi-level uh, coding, okay? Uh, because this is one way to achieve the capacity, okay? And we will see that uh, uh, we can break complexity using this, using some non-binary uh, MLC. So uh, one popular way to communicate uh, uh, efficiently in this regime is to use uh, orthogonal modulation, orthogonal waveforms. So what is a continuous uh, orthogonal waveform is a set of waveforms, okay, defined over uh, zero, uh, zero TS, indexed by some uh, index S uh, belonging to a finite set of cardinal uh, M. Okay, and uh, so you can define as uh, inner product and you have this uh, direct function, so it's very simple. You have the digital orthogonal waveform, the digital counterpart, okay, where you have two vectors, okay, uh, over CN and uh, or RN, and uh, you have this inner product, which gives you um, uh, uh, an orthogonal basis. And uh, you have also uh, possibly, <laughs> continuous waveforms that are not strictly orthogonal, like the LoRa one. In the continuous domain, uh, it's not orthogonal, okay? But when you consider the a critically, critically sampled version of this, that is, in fact, you have a modulation, a set of modulation that are continuous, okay? And the cardinality is M. And uh, Shannon Nyquist tell you that uh, maybe you can represent this set with vector, okay, uh, with m uh, uh, of uh, dimension m, okay, and this is critically simple in that case. In in this uh, in this setting, okay, they are orthogonal, and they behave like orthogonal. And this is what you you will see at the receiver. So you will benefit from all the characteristic of an orthogonal modulation, but in the continuous time domain it's strictly not orthogonal, but you sample it, okay? And you have a sufficient statistic because, okay, you fulfill Shannon due to the bandwidth you, uh, you have with this kind of modulation, okay? And then uh, you, can, uh, you can have a digital waveform, equivalent waveform, okay? Uh, that is um, orthogonal, okay? And so belonging to this family, you have, a very big, a very high number of uh, modulations, such as uh, pulse position modulation, frequency shift modulation, FSK, where Shadamar functions uh, are also part of it. You have cyclic shift gain modulation. So I, I, it was, you know, normally uh, Emmanuel uh, had to, to do the talk uh, just before me, so it will be tomorrow. But uh, CSK is another, uh, a member of the family, if you take some uh, quasi-orthogonal sequences, okay, and you have the set of two, and uh, LoRa-based modulation are an instance of uh, chip spread spectrum modulation that can be shown to be a critically sampled orthogonal modulation. Okay, and just to, to type a few, you will have a different uh, type of uh, contributions, okay? Uh, for the coding parts, uh, you have people that have been working with uh, BICM ID based on binary turbo uh, turbo coded orthogonal modulation. You will have uh, people that have designed LDPC or repeat accumulate based orthogonal modulation. You have people working directly in the non-binary domain with convolutional code or uh, turbo coded modulation like the turbo FSK. It's not strictly non-binary, but it's, it's multi multi-binary, so it's 
acting as a non-binary coding scheme. And uh, you will have also non-binary LDPC codes or repeat electronic codes for PPM and so on. So you have a lot of uh, contribution that have addressed this, but most of the time it, it, uh, it has been for small uh, order, okay? And we will see that, for example, for LoRa, we are going from five bits per symbol up to 12, okay? Uh, and most of the time people are going from four to uh, from three to five, okay? Up to the equivalent of uh, a Gola field of order 32, okay? So, we will see how we can break uh, the complexity, okay? So I will just focus now on, on LoRa as a critical example of orthogonal modulation. It is uh, described as, a, uh, as an exponential, okay? Where you have a phase, phase signal, okay? That is a chip, chip modulated, okay? So you're describing a chip. So you have uh, the information here, okay? And uh, uh, here you have uh, a linear phase shift, okay? And so what we can show is that uh, this uh, modulation act as a CPM, continuous phase modulation, but it is memoryless. So you will have a power spectrum that is exactly of, uh, uh, that, that is very, very narrow, okay? Which is very good for, for AOT. And, uh, and and this is mainly due to the fact that you do not have phase discontinuity, okay? And it's simpler that uh, the old JSM, okay, uh, CPM, because you do not have memory. So you can decode it like a memoryless modulation of uh, higher order, okay? So it's very simple. Uh, what has been shown by Kula uh, Volbe is just that we can interpret uh, easily this uh, modulation as the product of a member Z T and X T of T, okay, where uh, Z of T is a chirp, okay? Z of T is a chirp, okay, quadratic chirp. And as you can see, this term does not carry information. It does not carry information at all. And the second term, this one, is called is what we call the unchipped or the, the chipped signal. Okay. And we will see that these two things, okay, will give us when we will uh, uh, sample the signal at uh, chip rate, okay, uh, will give us two things. One chip that is uh, a kind of uh, um, a waveform just for the to, to shape the signal, okay? And the second part is an FSK. So basically, LoRa is just an FSK, digital FSK, which is uh, then uh, uh, shaped with a chip. But the chip does not carry any information. And that is very important. And so when you sample it, okay, you have these two terms, okay? And you can see here that you have a digital chip, it's similar to that of, uh, that of uh, two uh, sequence, in fact, in the digital domain. And here you have an FSK. And so you have here a critically sampled orthogonal modulation because when you apply the matches filter to this, this part is removed, okay? And you get an FSK. Okay, this is played the fact that you can have a very simple receiver, okay, based on FFT. Okay. So the equivalent signal we have to deal with is the following, is given by equation two, where we have one vector, okay, of size M. Here you have the channel, X of N finally, is a vector with all zero except one position, okay? So it's an orthogonal, it's a, it's a vector of uh, an orthogonal basis, okay? Plus uh, WN, which is a white noise. And so 
you have an orthogonal modulation. And then you can apply classical uh, uh, soft decoding, okay, in the Korean case and uh, in the non Korean regime, and you can use all you know about no, no, uh, orthogonal modulation. Okay, so this is very simple. So based on this, uh, we can, uh, what has been done so far is that uh, people are considering BICM's chip speed, uh, chip, uh, speed spectrum uh, system. Well, they consider a, a binary error correcting scheme, okay? Uh, concatenated with this kind of modulation. And in the standard, it's an amine code. Okay, so it's very basic. It's a very, very, very simple, but very inefficient in terms of coding. Okay, so the question now is, uh, can we characterize the asymptotic uh, capacity and the capacity in both case, the coded modulation capacity and the BICM capacity, okay? And so this is very simple. You just have to compute the mutual information. But here, you have to normalize by the dimension. Okay, so the rate, the mutual information y of x and uh, uh, i of x and y, okay, will be a number between zero and log two of m, okay, and you have to divide by m the dimension of the vector, okay, and plus you have some kind of uh, it's not a roll of factor, but it's a uh, um, uh, it's an efficiency term, okay, in terms of bandwidth. And if you have a spreading factor of 5 to 12 in LoRa, it's just because when you have a spreading factor or some, uh, if you cut information with, uh, with a number of bits less than 5, okay, uh, this alpha can be very, very large, okay? up to zero, five and, or more, okay? But if you go down, or if you go uh, up for the number of bits, five, six, seven, you go to one, alpha go to zero, okay? So you're very, very efficient. This is the reason why they do not use uh, this kind of, uh, uh, they do not use spreading factor less than five, okay? So you can compute easily your, uh, your capacity, and as you will see, it's uh, completely the opposite to the module, uh, the, to the um, linear modulation. Okay, the here EC over N zero is uh, energy per chip. Okay, uh, which is equivalent to an SNR. Okay, this is a good metric for uh, comparing uh, things. You have the one-dimensional uh, Shannon capacity, and as um, the modulation order increase, in fact you decrease the capacity. Of course, because you're coding uh, several bits, but you use more space to code it, okay? So what you see is that when you increase what we call the spreading factor, that is the number of bits per symbol, okay? You can reach the capacity. Then you can see it in the EB uh, over N0 plan, okay? And what you can see is that here, and here, okay, you have what we call is a U shape. Maybe you have seen this for non coherent communication. This, uh, if you look at this curve, as if you, you want to do adaptive modulation coding, you do not see the fact that when you are doing binary BICM system, you're completely inefficient in terms of if you're over in zero because you have this U shape. This U shape tells you that, in fact, for some rate, okay. You, you spend too much energy to send it. So it's completely inefficient. The second thing is this, uh, the second thing here is uh, the fact that when you are using orthogonal modulation, okay, uh, all symbols uh, are the same distance to each other, okay? And uh, a consequence is that the binary mapping to symbol does not have impact on the performance, you can take any mapping. It does not change, okay, the bit error rate, okay? So what we can say from this is that, 
for orthogonal modulation, whatever the mapping you are using, you will always have a huge penalty if you consider by a BICM system. And the only way to compensate for this loss is to do BICM ID. So you have LoRa, you have Hamming plus uh, an orthogonal modulation, you cannot have good performance because you lose a lot, okay? And this is not the non-coherent regime. In the non-coherent regime, it's even worse, okay? So you have two choices now, to do BICMID or to do non-binary coding. This is the only way to go close to this limit because you just have to figure out that, okay, you are using a very simple scheme, but you are so far away from the capacity that all this power you have, you, you do not use, okay, is something that you cannot use to increase the number of users you can decode when you are in uncertain level. You, you see? So I think this is, this is uh, too inefficient. Uh, when looking at the North Korean uh, channel, at the Rio Gen channel, this is the same thing. It's even worse, okay? Uh, here you, you have also, uh, you have this U shape, what we call the U shape, it shows you that when you communicate in the North Korean setting, okay, there are some rates for which uh, it's useless to communicate. And usually you have to consider high rate, okay? So all these rates, have to be avoided, okay? In the communication setting, when you do it, and if you look only on this, and most of the time people want to do adaptive coding and modulation, they, they are looking on these things, okay? But it's not efficient. You have to be careful. You have to consider this, okay? So this is just a focus, just to show you the penalty you have, Okay, when you are going from the coherent to the non-coherent regime, okay, and you and you see that uh, the penalty you have in BI for BICM system without GRT decoding is huge. Okay, so now let's go to the five length regime. Okay, to do that because it's not that simple, uh, you you can do some uh, normal approximation, but uh, a very simple way to compute some uh, bounds is to use a random coding bound from Gallagher. It's very simple, very efficient. Okay, you have a penalty, but you get all the flavor, you know, of what you have to do. Okay, so here I have plotted, uh, I have fixed uh, a probability of error, okay? I took N equal to really uh, uh, 256 um, uh, octet and uh, 66 octet, okay? And I was looking for uh, the behavior of the random coding room, okay? How, what is the maximum rate at which I can communicate to, uh, to reach 10 to the minus four in this example? And what you can see is that this is exactly what you, you said. You have a penalty, okay, for low rate. At finite lengths. It's really better to communicate here, for example, almost all these points, it's right one half or just below and upper. Lower, forget. And uh, so this is very, very interesting to, to see this because you have this U shape and this tell you that in some somehow that there are some strategies that are totally inefficient in terms of uh, energy efficiency. And for this kind of thing, we want to be efficient in terms of energy, okay? And so here, this is just a zoom, okay? Where I plotted the normal approximation, which is more, uh, and uh, it's very simple to compute a normal approximation for this, uh, but, uh, and uh, you have this kind of point, okay? You see the point? So you, we have to have this in mind, and so we, we won't know to design scheme that can operate close to this to this limit. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the, the coherent versus non-coherent. You will have the same thing and so on. So 
it's quite uh, interesting to see how it uh, it evolves with the length and the fact that the coherent and non coherent can overlap in some how. Okay, so now I, I want uh, just to show some basic results we have on the design and what we can try to do. Uh, if you want to design binary and non-binary LBPC code in this kind of regime, and I will show you how uh, we can perform compared to, to existing schemes. So uh, what we will consider is the optimization of uh, LDPC code, binary LDPC code first, uh, that are uh, doing iterative decoding with uh, the soft mapper. Okay, and the, the, the idea here is to optimize the structure of the code. Okay, so it will not give you good code. You are designing a BICM with ID, so it's a joint code and modulation. Okay, if I take one code that I will optimize and I send to you and you use it on MATLAB, it will be catastrophic, but it's normal. Okay, when you want to optimize binary LDPC codes for iterative decoding, usually you are tending to cycle codes which are very, very bad codes, okay? But they're very efficient, okay? To try to denoise, okay? Uh, uh, in, it, uh, in an iterative way, okay? So do not try to use it uh, alone. It will not work at all. So what is a, a bin, uh, binary DPC codes? Bin, uh, binary DPC codes are defined by sparse matrix, okay? They can be uh, represented using TANOGRAPH with two set of nodes, okay? Uh, variable node and chunk nodes. And uh, what we want to optimize is in fact, the connectivity of the graph, okay? During iterative decoding. So I just skip the details before and I just show you that this is a time graph of what we want to optimize. And what we want to optimize is the average connection of this, of the lower parts, okay? And so the the, the, the parameter of the optimization is uh, the distribution of these edges and the distribution of these edges, okay? Yes. And if I'm just uh, uh, taking uh, an exit chart approach, so I'm tracking the mutual information into the decoder and put it into equation, I can linearize, in fact, the decoder for some uh, fix. For example, I'm fixing uh, the dist this distribution I can set up a linear program, okay? And I can optimize uh, the density of the code asymptotically, of course. And then uh, I can, in fact, try to find the capacity achievable by this kind of codes asymptotically, okay? And so this is what uh, what we, we end up. So this is uh, uh, one example. So here uh, you have, uh, the we can opti we have optimized so this is not a non structure this is a binary protograph okay we put structure and we we can extend the, the results and uh, we 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 can uh, end up with a, a binary screen that is operating close to uh, to the capacity okay and what I uh, I put here uh, uh, okay what I put here is the fact that um, here you have the operating point of the LoRa standard, okay? Using R decoding, so I want to be firm. So I can use soft decoding because you are you can use soft decoding for the handling code, okay? And as you have a diagonal interleaver, in fact, you can do turbo decoding. It's not optimized like as this, but some people have proposed to do uh, LoRa soft iterative decoding. And so this is all the operative point. And what you can see is that you are far away from the capacity. And uh, uh, if you are so far, okay, this is a, a suboptimality in the multi user context. Okay. And, uh, but you have good candidates still that have been proposed. For example, Turbo FSK by, uh, by uh, Seva, okay? They have proposed a, a Turbo coded uh, FSK that are uh, operative quite, quite well, okay? The, the main difficulty is that it's, uh, they, they have a parallel Turbo code structure, okay? Which is not that easy 
uh, to handle in terms of uh, rate adaptivity. Okay. So what can I say? I can zoom. Okay. So if you want to be more uh, strategic, we can do better than uh, 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 a simple uh, LoRa. It's just to try to to show you uh, all the. Um, Microcosm of uh, IoT, okay, putting everyone, okay. I, I hope that uh, everybody is here, okay. Uh, what I can show you is that uh, we can do better with a simple corrosion of course, in fact, and do iterative coding. And it's clearly suboptimal because you will have, a, you will have error flaws uh, because of, uh, I can skip the detail, but, uh, but still it will work uh, fairly well. And what you see is that the VICM. Uh, capacity here uh, really limit uh, uh, your system and you have to iterate to close the gap. Okay? So this is uh, no uh, pilot length uh, simulation where I'm show, uh, showing you, uh, in fact, the uh, random calling moon and the normal approximation. Okay? Uh, and uh, this show you that uh, if you doing iterative decoding with BICM, you can operate close to, to the limit. And we will see just after that it's quite good also because you can benefit from diversity of the BICS system compared to a non-binary coding sheet. Okay? So I will skip this. Uh, we can discuss this later. So uh, can we do better? Yes, of course, we can do, try to do better by doing some non-binary coding. Uh, and that's it. We, we will directly work uh, in the constellation size, okay? So the field order is completely matched to the modulation order. This is very simple. So what can we do? Uh, we can try to optimize, okay, uh, the structure as we have done. So it's much more demanding because we have to consider non-binary exit charts. And, uh, but we, have, we, have, we are quite lucky because for orthogonal modulation, uh, in the IWGN uh, context, it's very simple. In fact, it's a direct generalization of, exi of the existing exit chart. It's much more complex, but it's feasible. And we have something that is quite good. But uh, in the general setting, we have to generalize tools that have been proposed uh, by Benatan, considering multidimensional and, um, and also the relay case. So it's much more computationally demanding. But once you have your, uh, your functionals, it's easy to, to optimize. So what we have is the following. Uh, if we consider uh, non-binary LDPC codes, as you can see, we have uh, binary LDPC codes that can operate close to the capacity. And um, if we are uh, considering a regular non-binary LDPC codes, uh, that is cycle codes, which are uh, usually uh, the, the codes that are considered as sufficient because in fact for non-binary LDPC codes, you do not need much more irregularity compared to binary LDPC codes. Uh, you can see that you can have a huge penalty, okay? Uh, you can try to break this gap by considering more involved punctured uh, and structured non-binary photograph. So you can, try to, to, bridge, uh, to bridge the gap, but it's not sufficient. You have to optimize, okay? And in EV over N0, if you optimize, you can have uh, 0 0.75 uh, improvement, okay? Uh, but you still have some small penalty in, in terms of uh, uh, capacity for the relay fading channel, okay? So what I try to, to convince you is that on the AWGN channel, it's Almost everything is simple. And if you are going to the relay filling channel, which is a, a very common channel for this kind of application, it becomes very difficult, okay? And finally, binary LDPC codes with uh, iterative decoding are performing quite well due to the fact that you, you have an, an additional uh, diversity uh, that you can gain, okay? Going to the bit level, even if you have to do uh, iterative decoding, okay? So this is uh, what we can get if we uh, uh, look at the finite length simulation. Well, you, what you, you see is that for the AWGN channel, we are quite close to the fundamental limit. Okay, we, we, if we work well, 
for this for rate one half, we always are in the backdrop of zero dot uh, five uh, uh, dB from uh, the normal approximation. Okay, so it's not the random coding boom and the, and the converse, but it's it's still good. And uh, you have the right the the performance. Okay, for the regular uh, setting. So just to conclude, uh, so you can extend it to PSCALORA, okay? PSCALORA is just adding one degree of dimension. So PSCALORA has been introduced by uh, CA as coplanar FSK, you know? But what is this scheme is just you add, so you think about LoRa, about uh, it's a linear, okay? You have a chirp modulated, okay? So you have, uh, a polyno you have a, an affine. Here you have an affine, and before you have a linear modulation. You have a linear uh, uh, shift uh, uh, for the for the phase, and here you have an affine. Uh, you you add an affine term here, and uh, what you have here is just you can increase the capacity, but it's it's good for small spreading factor. For high spreading factor, I think that you do not have much more uh, you know, gain. So it's if you want to increase the operating range of existing LoRa, you can improve it uh, quite a lot, OK? And so I will just finish with this as a perspective. Uh, as I told you, we want to, we can be efficient. Uh, if we are using uh, non-binary DPC uh, codes to reach the capacity, but the problem with there is the problem of the curse of the dimensionality. Think about the fact that we can go to uh, GF2 to the power of 12, okay? And so uh, it's huge. It's complex. It's, uh, the complexity is very high and we cannot afford this. So one of the possibility is to use multi-level coding, okay? And you know that multi-level coding has not been used for linear modulation because it's not that interesting due to the fact that uh, with BICM, without ID, you are close to the capacity, OK? But for non, for non for an, uh, orthogonal modulation, it's not the case. Not the case at all, OK? So if you consider, for example, uh, multi-level coding, OK, uh, for uh, seven <laughs> Here for eight bits, you will have eight levels that are very, very different. Okay, so this is not the solution. But if you consider, for example, if you are uh, you, you are working with eight bits per symbol, you can break the complexity going from GF uh, GF uh, two hundred fifty six to GF sixteen using multi level coding, and then once again you can gain both. In, uh, in capacity, you can operate close to the capacity using this scheme, and you break the complexity. The problem is that because we are using some kind of superposition coding, you have a double penalty at the final things because you have uh, you have the num the same number of channel uh, used per code word, but you have less bits, so the, finally the dimension is reduced. And the fact that uh, uh, if you have some errors in the first layer, you use the second one, okay? So there is a trade-off between complexity and performance for this finite link, but uh, we think that uh, doing MLC for this orthogonal scheme, okay, can help to, to break the complexity and to, and to have very efficient uh, scheme for very high order, uh, more, um, modulation, okay? And think about the fact that if you want to send some uh, LoRa signal to satellite, okay? The problem is not, is uh, the pass loss you have. And so you have to consider very, very, very high uh, spreading factor because you need it for your uh, link budget. And so if you want to be, to operate close to the capacity, you have no choice, okay? So I try, I just hope that I convince you that we have to, to design a more uh, efficient scheme for this kind of modulation. And that's not particularly uh, an easy task because you have a lot of problems to solve. Okay, so thank you.